This is the unique story of a brand new supercar, which most thought would never come true. The story of a new hyper-luxury brand in the automotive industry, which now many think is here to stay. Only six years back, the W Motors Lycan Hypersport was a dream in a young designer's head, merely sketches on paper. Now, after six years of hard work, the Lycan has gone into production. It has a price tag of $3.4 million, and it's the star of the newest Fast and Furious movie, the ultimate franchise for car enthusiasts. W Motors, the making of a supercar. Our film crews followed the W Motors team and its creator, Ralph DeBoss, for years, capturing this amazing story between joy and pain, nail-biting stress, and big moments of triumph. The three most important questions will be answered. Number one, does this supercar work? Can its drivetrain and design handle the 770 horsepower? Second, after his non-stop road show of almost two years, will Ralph DeVos finally sell one of his multi-million dollar Lycans? And question number three, what will the future bring for W Motors? The urge to design is always trying to find perfection. This is just pure love at first sight. There's no escape. If you are not crazy, you will not buy this. It is a masterpiece that people want to keep and collect and say, I own it and I'm proud of it. It's incredible. It's out of this world. Passion, power, and styling. It's really unbelievable. These men are talking about a car, a very special car. They have met in a secret, secure environment to put the final design touches to it. At the end, it will cost $3.4 million a piece. At this point, very few people on Earth even know about the activities in this secluded workshop. Torino in Italy. For more than a hundred years, this town at the foot of the Alps has been a center of the car industry and a home of passion for design and speed. So it's no coincidence, Ralph de Bas, a 27-year-old entrepreneur from Beirut, has turned to Torino to build the car of his dreams, the W Motors Hypersport Lycan, the first supercar developed in the Arab world. I wanted to produce the most expensive, luxurious, and exclusive car ever made. To build a world-class supercar, Ralph had to build a world-class team. I cannot do it alone. I cannot launch myself into creating such a gigantic project and say, I'm making the best car in the world, but I'm alone. It's impossible. I had to get the support of the biggest people in the industry. He first went to Magnus Dyer, a leading car maker with facilities all over the globe. Tiziano Novo is the general manager in Torino. We have the pleasure to work with many different customers. I can mention customers like uh, Volkswagen, like PSA Group, uh, like uh, Mercedes, uh, Ferrari, and uh, similar company where, where you can do some exotic uh, project. I was directly, maybe you will think that I'm, um, that I'm crazy, but I was directly really from the first moment very interested in this project because they came here with a dream, they came here with a vision, and they say we need someone that can help us to make real this dream. The engine and drivetrain are built at Ruf Automobile, one of Germany's biggest names in supercar engineering. They produce some of the best cars ever made in matters of performance. Now, Knowing their know-how, seeing what they're able to accomplish, we wanted to have something of that, of that racing DNA, of that authentic car manufacturing in our W. We made sure that what we have underneath is something out of this world. Next on board was Alfredo Stola, a legend in the sports car industry. I started to work in 1979 
and uh, I remember good project like uh, like uh, like Saab, like a Ferrari, like Mercedes, uh, like BMW, and many, 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 many of this. The two young guys, uh, okay, this, this is uh, for for us it was a surprise uh, because uh, what I understand that the guy, the the, the designer, is uh, in is, is from the beginning of of, of, of his career. And uh, if, if this is, I, I suppose that this is his, his first car, it's unbelievable. Now the only thing missing were the millions to pay for the development. Ralph called his old friend, Sadi Al Khalil, whose family made their wealth in Nigeria. In Beirut, I drive a rally car. I just keep on souping it up and souping it up, trying to make it as powerful as possible, so that when I show up in this Japanese car next to Lamborghinis and Ferraris, I like basically leave them in the dust. So. When Ralph told me he was working on a project, I said, could I please know more about this? You know I love cars. So he told me he's working on something extremely special. And we were at a cafe and I said, okay, interesting. Do you have a business plan? And that's when I took a look at it and I tried to keep my emotions inside of me because you need to have a poker face when trying to deal in anything that's to do with business. It was extremely difficult to do that. So we took it from there. Sari was the last of a handful of investors to commit. And once Ralph had the funds together, he launched full blast into the development. Only seven will be built, each with impressive performance. The Lycan Hypersport has a flat six twin turbo mid-rear engine, zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds, maximum speed of 395 kilometers per hour. It's one of the fastest cars in the world. $3.4 million. I think this is a fair price for what this machine is about to, to accomplish this year. Most important, there should be no compromises. Design, engine, interior, all should be in harmony and near perfection. Now perfection doesn't exist because we all perceive perfection in our own, uh, in our own eyes. So the idea to design something that can appeal to anyone is the biggest challenge of them all. So as a designer, I always try to find the right solution to solve a problem, a problem in aesthetics or a problem in, in, in mechanics or a problem in physics, just to make sure that the end result is something innovative, something completely new, and something we all want to desire. And this is design. The engineers in Torino are managed by Carlo Carena. Their goal, to stick to the design by Ralph but make the car work. Not an easy task. So it's very strange because it's the first project very different respect to the other one uh, for the door, uh, the tie get and something, the power of the car itself and the luxury that having inside this car uh, is very emotional for me. The W has a very unique door system. It's the only car in the world that opens up with a reverse upward position. But the hard part was uh, because we reversed the whole system to the, to the back, so the locks had to be reversed, uh, the opening system has to be reversed, and due to the structure and the architecture of the vehicle, the door system you know, usually contains everything in the front. So by having a regular architecture of the vehicle, by replacing everything in the back, wasn't easy to integrate. So that's why it was very, very hard to do. If you look also for the front hood and the back hood, they're also, they also open in reverse ways. We didn't want to create something very traditional. Even the door of the system of these, of the openings also open in different angles to make sure that it's authentic, like the cars from the 60s and the 70s as well. The team checks a supplier for the seats. The stitching, at least that's Ralph's idea, will be made of gold threads. With Ralph, what is good with Ralph is that every time you get something new and you get some, some, something more interesting. So we say in the past, yeah, maybe we could think about to put some gold somewhere. And today we speak about the gold of the seat. Let's hope that in the future we don't have the to make the car of gold <laughs> because it will become more difficult. Also for a company that theoretically is good like us. This is how we started adding up all the elements to make sure that the design, check. Engineering, it's one of the most powerful cars in the world, check. 
luxury. We have the diamonds in the inside. We have the concierge service. We have the gold stitching in the leather. We have unique door systems. We have all these elements that are adding up to make it so luxurious in a very, very distinguished way. People are surprised sometimes. Why diamonds? Why gold? Why, why these precious stones? Well, they're done in such a subtle way that people won't even see it unless the owner knows that it's inside of it. And he's the only one that's proud to know that he has all these elements inside. When, uh, when I heard about the diamonds and the light, uh, I say, oh, are we able to do it? And normally when I speak with Ralph, he said to me, yes, is everything easy, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I say, yes, yes, we have to do something. We will try our best and let's hope that it works. So here is uh, the oven that we put the pieces inside and the parts of the vehicle. Every body part of the Lycan needs to be handcrafted with particular precision. After going to the paint shop, it goes into different processes of uh, uh, polishing and painting into different many, many days. Such type of model or such a kind of production car is the painting. Normally, in a normal process, uh, you will paint the car once, twice. Here, we are painting the car six times, mm -hmm. especially on the carbon fiber parts. Uh, we are painting eight times. So here is uh, this very special room. As Mr. Novo always calls it, the kitchen and the heart of everything happening before actually creating a car. So everything is cooked inside here. And we make sure that all the molds are done. Everything is, is very well uh, brushed and uh, polished and studied before actually creating the positive from them. These people are the brains behind making this beautiful vehicle. And they have years of experience into making the most beautiful cars in the world. And using their experience, like you see, they put so much work and so much passion into what they do. And this is what makes the car beautiful in the end. It's the way they do it. It's not hard to actually produce carbon fiber. What's hard is to work it and to have a shape that is so beautiful, it's not only one piece. It's several, several, several tens of pieces put together into one complete and beautiful carbon fiber piece in the end. The design, the details, the massive performance, all this makes the first W Motors an extremely complex car. Uh, is a, is a very complicated model because it's very is is making a lot of parts. that you have a lot of composition composition a lot and now for the first time an exclusive look at the w motors hypersport lycan one of the most expensive cars in the world by its proud creator ralph DeBoss. it's not easy to create a new identity for a new supercar so the lycan is here in front of you the idea has been in our, in our mind for so much so long. The design has been there, imagining it, seeing it, how it's going to look in real life. But we have never, never even thought we're going to see it on the street. And now it's right here in front of us. I wanted to integrate diamonds, diamonds inside the LED light. And this is the first car in the world, and the only car in the world, that has LED encrusted diamonds. A white gold piece that has diamond encrusted all around it. And the client can choose between rubies, sapphires, and emeralds to integrate inside the car, depending on the color that is chosen. These lights are eight centimeters in width, and it is one of the smallest lights <laughs> in the world. But we wanted to make it so simple, so pure. Even these technical specs are even adapted in this W to be so minimum. And this is also the only car in the world that has this line coming in, goes all the way here with the same color of the body, and goes back down here. I can guarantee no one has that except the W. Here you have the, also the DRL and the, the, the turning signal, so a signal that's integrated inside the light as well from here with a thin and long design. The wheels are very special. So the W has 20 inch in the back and 19 inches in the front. The design of it are very modern, as you see. We wanted to go with a V shape as the V is taken in several sections of the vehicle. And this has a very special meaning for us because the V is the number seven in Arabic. And using the number seven, we wanted to play on that to produce only seven cars in the world of the Lycan. Why the seven? Because the seven, you have seven wonders of the world, the seven emirates, the seven uh, continents. The number seven is used a bit everywhere in bits and pieces of the vehicle, very discreetly. As you see it on the roof, you see it here on the air blades, you see it on the plaque in the back, you see it in the rims, and you also see it in the front lights. My idea, my initial idea, was to have a body inside the body. So this was something that I always wanted to do when creating a car. So having the main, the main body of the vehicle that's down and having another body coming around it and wrapping its arms around it also gives it, it, gives it a very modern spaceship look. It had to be massive. 
it's two meters in width in the back. You have wheels that are 35 centimeters in width each, which you can clearly see on back. And you have a big diffuser coming from down in carbon fiber to hold the car together and push it to the ground. The transmission is also positioned in this position right here in the back, in a horizontal, horizontal way. So it had to be quite big to accommodate all the mechanical system that the W has to, has to offer. So what is really, really nice to see here is the carbon fiber blades that are surrounding the lights in the back. If you look closely to the car and you follow up on the side view of the vehicle, you would find the same blade that would go all the way here through the body, go out in the center position of the vehicle in the side air blades, and continue as well in the front around the lights. The exhaust system has been designed also in a way to be really big and massive in the back. What I love in a car is to find a really beautiful and big exhaust system in the back. We didn't want to keep a central position. We didn't want to put standard rounded ones on the left and on the right. Instead, we had these big, big squares or rectangles that are on the left and on the right. They go all the way inside. And if you put your hand, you can feel it go all the way down. So this plate is actually signed with the number of the vehicle from one to seven and the date of delivery that the client received the car in. So we have one of seven, which is right here. Arabic letters and Arabic alphabets are beautiful, beautiful way to write, and they give it an artistic feel when you see it. So someone that doesn't know, doesn't know how to read it, will think it's just a graphic that we just put on, the, on top of the vehicle. But at the same time, when someone knows Arabic and we see that, he will understand everything about the vehicle just by looking at this small plate on top. If you look at it from certain angles, you see it's not a straight door. It's actually going into several, several curves and lines going inside of it. This has been created like a muscle. So when you see it, you feel like it's actually pulling, it's making an effort. Instead of keeping it white, we wanted to have this part in black. By doing that, it's giving a lot of, uh, how do you say, you feel like the car is much thinner in the middle and much larger in the back, giving the feeling that the animal is actually jumping. And you can see it here with the legs in the back, giving the feeling like the wolf is on its back feet and jumping at really, really high speeds. And this really shows the animal inside the W. We are very proud to make uh, this, uh, this model and uh, we, we dream uh, the 28th of January 2003 for show to all our friends here in Torino what we, what we did. This kind of customer that we have, the WB Motors guys, are, are special customers. Special customers with whom you can not only Become, you can not only be a supplier, but you can become a friend. And sometimes the friendship helps to make possible what is impossible. I know Ralph. I know the potential that he has and the dedication he has. So that gave me confidence. When you have preparation, and when preparation meets opportunity, you have the formula for success. Seeing the people work on it, seeing the enthusiasm that was put in it, seeing the passion that was put inside of it. This really, really showed, and this really may give us even more confidence to know that the people working on the car were as excited and as happy and as proud as I was when looking at this car, as my partner were when just walking in and seeing this car in front of us. This team that we had, from Magna Stea to the people working on the car, to Alfredo Stola, to the suppliers, to anyone involved in this project, from the smallest crew to the biggest piece that is installed inside, it's all done with passion. It's all done with their heart. From computer animation to design model, now a year later, the engineers are about to assemble the first real car. Ralph has invited super VIPs from around the world, each of them a potential client for the $3.4 million car, of which only seven will be built, is finished. Well, almost. This morning, Ralph is back in Torino, and he has taken another risky gamble. He invited an elite group of multi-millionaires to Italy to show them the car with the engine roaring. This morning, on our way now to the factory, they should start with the interior when we get there, and hopefully by this afternoon, the car should be assembled. So uh, we'll, we'll have a look in a bit and see what's gonna happen. We had a very tough year, so it was really, really hard to finish everything with uh, all the constraints we had. But we had an incredible team that's going really full throttle to be to make this car become a reality on time. 
with a very short timing that we had, they did an incredible job. In a few hours, uh, we have uh, many people coming from around the world, uh, from Hong Kong, from, uh, from Switzerland, from Lebanon, uh, from Germany, just to see the car for the first time. We're very excited, very looking forward to it. What Ralph is about to see is a surprise. The super rich will be there in less than three hours, but the Lycan does not even look like a car yet. The mechanics and engineers are still putting together the complicated supercar. Every single part is handmade. Every single part needs to fit perfectly in a car with a $3.4 million price tag. Work, work, work. We had to work Saturdays and Sundays every single week for the past four months to be able to deliver something. As you can see, we're not quite there yet. There's nothing inside, which really worries me. And we only have just shy of two hours. Ay, 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 ay. It's very tight. It's very, very tight. I really hope we can make it. But uh, I think at least 90% will have, will have a car ready by then. So. Let's see how it goes, fingers crossed. We still have to mount the hood, the rear, the spoiler, the exhaust, the front, the interior, the electric. Okay, don't get me started, now I'm, now I'm panicking. <laughs> Ralph's father, Roy DeBas, has also come from Beirut to Torino for the big day. Like most people, the Lebanese businessman was not convinced when his son first told him that he wants to build a supercar. So when he came with the idea of having his own company and creating his own product as a product, uh, we were a little bit in the beginning hesitant till we found out what was his plan and how was he planning to create this company and take it forward. Then when we found out that it was a solid plan, like any other business, risky, but solid, he wanted to follow it up, I encouraged him. Wanted all the time to find out uh, new things to discover. Never missed an opportunity to travel, never missed an opportunity to visit the factories that we have, or the countries, and to take the adventures with me, whether it was sea traveling, uh, air traveling, car traveling. We made many trips together by car from Beirut to Saudi Arabia, to the Arab countries, all of them, we visited them by car, driving from Beirut. So he, he liked the adventure and take the risk. He lived his, uh, his life with, with new adventures and discoveries. And Ralph, since he was young, he was accompanying me with, with all the different stages in our business. So I think he required a lot of experience. He always consult with us, take our advice, and uh, uh, act in consequence. Nobody has believed in the project except few friends and few uh, uh, of the family. Ralph and design director Anthony just got news that the bus with the millionaire guests will soon arrive. While they change into suits, the mechanics still feverishly work on the Lycan, but the engine is far from running. Ralph always sets high goals for the people. Luckily, they have never failed. Ralph needs to greet the guests any minute now and will not be able to supervise the work anymore. Be very efficient, very quick. You have 10 minutes of everything in the car. So make sure everything is okay. Your system, your side, their side. All right? Yes. yes. So we have maximum one hour. Quasi <laughs> finito. One hour. Okay. They arrive. They arrive. They arrive. They arrive. All right. Now, even he is showing nervousness. What's going on is that our clients are here and nothing is ready yet. Oops. Running about the factory, checking on the last details. Two minutes? No, plus. Plus. Demi-heure. Maximum. 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 Maximum demi-heure. Okay. One minute? Oui, mais tu as une minute, tu es en tout heure. Tu es en tout ça, tu es en tout heure. Une minute, on se retrouve là. The guests have traveled to Torino just to see the Lycan, but the Lycan is not ready yet. Ralph and his team need to buy time. First measure: loads of small talk. So 
before we uh, before we do the presentation, uh, we will just show you a small video that what we did during the past one year, so you can explain to understand where we went with the prototype around the world and show what this car is really to the people that saw it. After a 10-minute video, Ralph holds a presentation from a PowerPoint. Fortunately, he needs to be translated into Chinese, as some high rollers from Hong Kong are part of the group. Just behind the next wall, Alfredo Stola is pushing the crew, while Ralph is now answering questions. Ralph's next idea, give them a factory tour, which takes even more time. He shows them where the carbon fiber body parts are made, how they assemble models to check if they fit, and quite a highlight, the three-dimensional holographic control panel. But then, after 90 minutes, he knows he can't wait any longer. He needs to show the real car, even if it's not finished. So what we will do now is we'll give you the chance to see how we really assemble the Lycan. Ralph himself also sees the car for the first time with the engine installed. Alois Ruf, founder of Ruf Automobile from Germany, on the mid-rear twin-turbo engine, delivering 770 horsepower. The whole setup of a mid-engine sports car with a um, special rear axle um, arrangement that you see here, which uh, really reminds you of a Formula One car or of a Le Mans car, a Le Mans prototype. Uh, yes, and I can show you here more of the details. You see the horizontal shock absorbers and uh, the springs and the linkage and the integrated uh, stabilizer system. It's uh, something that you only know from really high carat uh, race cars. And then the creator of the Lycan turns the key on his beast for the very first time. Everybody loves the car. Unbelievable. It's even better than we, what we expected. You have to be a genius to, be, to build this car. It's like, I don't know, Michelangelo, Raffaello, it's just the biggest name in, in art. I would describe it like this. Because it's a unique, special piece, it's very, very, very well sewed and well done. If I had the money, I would buy two of them. Well, it was a great moment, you know, it's another baby that uh, was born and started life. The moment of his glory is now. You have to motivate, you have to give it a chance to the newcomers, and especially when they're so serious, so persistent, and they have this drive. I'm a very proud father. I can only say bravo. Ralph DeBas at his new home, Dubai. He has moved the company to the capital of luxury. We decided to move from Beirut and be located here in the UAE, especially in Dubai as well, as an image also to make sure that we are in the center of luxury. The UAE have created uh, some landmarks which are recognized worldwide. For instance, the Ferrari World and uh, on, uh, the, Yas the Yas Marina, the Yas Circuit, uh, if you're even Burj Khalifa right behind us also. These are recognized landmarks that are seen around the world as the tallest, the biggest, of course, the most advanced, uh, the most unique places on earth. And uh, for us, it's something very special because we wanted to create also the most unique brand in the world. 
the first Arabian brand of supercars, of hypercars. Work in Dubai starts immediately. In the offices right next to the highest building in the world, W Motors PR agency presents the strategy for the most luxurious car in the world. People don't know that we're based here. We need to show them here and that the car is here. I'm putting a strategic plan for W Motors. Yeah, I'm doing, building up relationship. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one meeting for you with the editors, introducing, introducing the concept of W Motors, why you are existing here, yeah. why you're doing, here, uh, doing this for the Arab world. We know how to treat it. Mm -hmm. This is why when we talk luxury, we're talking completely different level. We're doing, we're doing something different and something unique. I want to impress you by the quality of the coverage, by the quality of the editorial. Your car or your brand is a luxury brand. Somewhere in Dubai, a supercar garage in an industrial area. The Lycan is coming out of hiding. Today is the day of truth. For the first time, the car will drive at high speed. Were the computer simulations correct? What a better place to try than on a racetrack. The first rollout of the W Motors Lycan at the Dubai Autodrome. So we're fueling the car at 8 octane, uh, just for 40 liters to keep the tank half, uh, half full. It's going to the track now and uh, Mr. Hans Kepler, the official uh, driver Mr. Hans Kepler, he's going to take care of the car now and it's going to be in good hands to, uh, to test it. Test driver Hans Kepler and the engineer Thomas Folkt of Roof Automobile have come from Germany to oversee the test and make sure the powerful engine runs within the right parameters. Six years in the making and uh, everyone's waiting to see, it, to see it drive, to see it roll, and we actually made it. The first verdict of the pro driver after a couple of laps. But will the car survive all the high speed laps that follow? Now Hans Kepler pushes the Lycan to the limit. Ganz ein eigenes Feeling. Also, das, das, du bewegst dich emotional mit. Now Ralph takes his first laps. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this gentleman is history in the making, this is it, yeah. we're making it. <laughs> the first one was, was really mind-blowing, mind uh, the sound was crazy, the feeling was unbelievable, that's all I can say. They have created a $3.4 million car. Now they want to show it to the world. It's the number one car exhibition in the number one supercar market in the world. The Dubai International Motor Show. Just the right place to present the $3.4 million supercar. It's as simple as this. Tonight will be the most important moment in the young company's history. Ralph DeBoss will launch the Lycan to the world press, top industry players, and high-ranking members of the royal family. The moment is only an hour away. 
all exhibitors are putting their final touches to their stands and cars. Lamborghini is here, Ferrari, McLaren, and of course, Porsche. But everybody today is talking about the new kid on the block. Ralph DeBoss and his team are at the point of no return. Press has arrived, anxious to see the new supercar by W Motors. The big moment has come. Ralph only has one choice. Take a deep breath and get on with it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press and colleagues of the industry. A legend making history along the way, the Lycan is born. Fuma la macchina, la fuma la macchina. Four simple words that led us to achieve the impossible. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with my greatest pleasure, pride and joy, that I present to you for the first time the Lycan Hypersport 2014 pre-production car. History in the making, a dream that is finally reality. Give a welcome to the Lycan Hypersport. For long days, Ralph and his team present his car to potential clients, shakes and highnesses, 12 hours a day. One of the first visitors, Saudi Arabia's racing star, Abdelaziz Al Faisal, who raced the 24 hours of Le Mans five times, and a two-time champion of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge Middle East. Uh, you know, this is the pre-production, that's why it's yeah, yeah, yeah. today. So all the finishing will be much better. Yes. At this stage, with the pre-production, we're very proud, you know, we're going to do something. As I said, the first roll up. Right. You didn't even do a roll up. No, 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 no. So it's a minute pre-production. By the time we are going to get better. Much better. It is going to order everything in our life. Everything, everything can be customizable, not only the, the material, the serve, and then you but also the design of the seat can be changed, the gear stick, the steering wheel, everything can be fully customizable for you. The killer handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very easy, very easy. Thank Except you. Thank you. Thank you. Unbelievable. The race driver is especially impressed by the three-dimensional holographic control panel. The hologram thing is really, <laughs> it's new. We need it in our race cars now. The Dubai police officers from the supercar unit also drop by. After four days of presenting the car, W Motors now knows the interest in the Lycan is huge. Ralph is confident that it will even increase once the car has more mileage on it. Next stop, Kuwait. The Gulf Country is home to the historical, vintage, and classic cars museum, and the Lycan will be shown next to some of the most precious cars in the world. The original James Bond, Austin Martin DB5 Superleggera 1964, is on display here. The first car that ever rolled on the sandy pitches of the Middle East here, a 1904 Minerva. And the first car to have bulletproofed windows. Zakaria Dashti knows everything about classical cars. Give us a small tour. Let's, let's uh, go. Let's start uh, from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Eisenhower, the American president. Eisenhower car. This is the original what? one? Original. You're like in a private jet. So you open the door and then you go on the left. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so it's like a, you, go, you go inside and then you take, so a, you left. take a left. Yeah. And then you go straight and you're there. This 1939 Rolls Royce belonged to the king of Sudan. It's impressive. We're gonna, we, even, you know, in the W, we decided to put these ropes as well. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's not a joke. No, it's a beautiful car. Just walking into the museum was, was a great, uh, great feeling knowing that on our left and on our right are the collector cars from all the presidential cars that ever, that are, you know, from Kennedy to, uh, to the Lincolns that were used, to, to all these cars that have a lot of meaning and history being on our right. And at the same time, if you just look straight, you will see the W Motors Lycan just standing there, you know, for the first time in this museum, having a modern car like this and representing the whole Arab worlds and all Arab nations 
in one car. So this was a beautiful feeling. We were very, very, very uh, excited to have the, uh, the car here. The from W Motors, the Lycan. It's uh, an achievement for uh, everybody in Arabia. It's a solemn moment in the car museum. With his new Kuwaiti friends, Ralph unveils the car. W Motors بلشت بحلم بلشت بحلم عربي حلم كبير وكبر ليكون حلم عالمي واللي عملناه هو مثل ما عم بيقولوا هون اكيد انجاز عربي وطبعا قبل كل شيء انجاز عالمي it was a great evening i mean we had a great show the response was very positive we are, the people are very happy to see the car finally uh, live in front of them and everyone loved the car it was a beauty like you can see here and uh, this car has traveled the world. It will always keep on traveling the world just to show the people what we're able to do. Doha at the Qatar Motor Show. Suddenly, Ralph is approached by a gentleman working for Qatari Protocol. He asks him to join the small and exclusive group that welcomes His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Sheikh Hamid bin Jazm bin Jabar Al Thani. Looking forward to it. Let's get them. <laughs> the W Motors like it. The Prime Minister is one of the first visitors at the stand to admire the car. But for the four days, Ralph and his crew are constantly selling, pitching, presenting it in Doha. We had over 160,000 people that visited the stand. And from these people, we had around the first two days were just VIPs and, uh, and private invitations only. So we had just the whole royal family that came from the government people, from uh, the ministers. Every single day we had 20 or 30 of them just coming to see the car. The prototype model of the Lycan is packed in a box. It has arrived from the Qatar Motor Show to Dubai's Jebel Ali port, the largest harbor in the region. From Jebel Ali Harbor, the next stop is the Dubai Marina. The prestigious Dubai Boat Show is launching tomorrow. W Motors will present the Lycan to the super-rich clientele at the so-called Supercar Promenade. Everything is ready the next morning. The ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has come to open the boat show. While hundreds of high net worth visitors have come to see the super yachts, many of them are surprised to see the brand new supercar. People are very shocked to see this car here to buy. Everyone heard about it, everyone read it, saw it on TV, which is really, really, uh, really good for us because we know that the buzz was actually created in the Middle East as well. The number one TV news network in the world has also come to do a story on the boat show. CNN interviews the creator of the Lycan. Diamond encrusted cars, gold iPads, and big ticket items is nothing new in the region. But in today's economic climate, would people really pay $3.4 million for a car? So we just had CNN uh, do an interview for their Marketplace Middle East uh, section. It's going to be aired next week uh, five times a day. From the Dubai Boat Show, the W Motors team has to rush to neighboring Abu Dhabi. This time, no cameras are allowed, and Ralph only hints at who requested to see the Lycan. Interest was so high that <laughs> no, we, even, we even got calls uh, from the royal families, from palaces, uh, just to congratulate us uh, to come visit and see the car. A day in spring in Dubai. It is the only city at this point where people can witness this. The W Motors Lycan Hypersport, picking up speed on the highway, cruising along the skyline, filing into bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, just like any other car. 
But this car is not like any other car. This car has diamonds in its headlights, gold thread stitched into the leather seats, and a price tag of $3.4 million. On the top floor of one of Dubai's more than 400 skyscrapers are the new offices of W Motors, the company founded by Ralph DeBas to create the Lycan Hypersport. Everyone knows the Arab world and the Middle East and Dubai to have the most extravagant cars and the most beautiful collection of, uh, of cars in the world. Now, even Dubai police has an incredible fleet of supercars. So it makes perfect sense to have the Lycan around these beautiful cars. We had the special forces that came to the stand and they requested to have the Lycan, so it's, it's fantastic. As it happens, the W Motors Lycan draws the attention of somebody about 14,000 kilometers away from Dubai. Hollywood wants the Lycan, but Ralph almost misses his chance. It's incredible because uh, for the first time, I mean, from, from what I know, uh, we got approached by Universal. So we got approached actually by, by them by email, sending various emails to our info accounts, our generic account, asking to get in touch with us uh, for a filming opportunity to having the car in the movie. So we didn't know who they were, we didn't know what movie it was, and we didn't even bother to reply to these emails. And then we got in touch by, we got in, uh, contacted by someone uh, from Abu Dhabi, from a studio here in Abu Dhabi, that's working closely with Universal Studios, and that informed us that they are actually doing something in Abu Dhabi, and they would love to have the car in a big Hollywood movie. Little did I know it was actually Fast and Furious 7. And they got in touch with us directly, so Universal was on the phone. And then they said, you know what, we want to have the Lycan in the movie. It's going to be one of the major plots in Fast and Furious 7, and we would like to have to see how we can collaborate. Now, at this stage, of course, you know, I was thinking in my mind, as an entrepreneur, how much it will cost us, you know, what's the exposure we're going to get, what's, you know, what are the ups and downs and the pros and cons of having this Lycan in, in Hollywood, money-wise. I didn't know that they actually, the next morning, they ordered 18 cars, one eight, to be in the movie. So I said, okay, so you want 18 cars, but who's gonna pay for it? And they said, we will pay for it. Just give us the code and let's move ahead. Unfortunately, they wanted the 18 cars in four weeks. And it was quite impossible. And I think if you've seen, you know, the evolution of W Motors, we were stressed by building the car on time for the motor show, uh, Dubai in 2013, uh, to build another prototype, to be there ready. We had many shows coming up and we were really late on everything. And then getting this order in, it was quite impossible. And after negotiating, inviting them to come to Italy, visiting the factory, sitting with them and, and finalizing a deal, we ended up uh, building around 10 cars uh, in total, uh, all delivered within eight weeks to Atlanta and we doubled the workforce at the factory, we doubled everything there. We were working day and night, Saturdays and Sundays, and we were able to deliver every single one of them on time. So it was absolutely amazing. When they started doing the filming, it was actually incredible seeing the cars getting crashed. Yes. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to watch, but it was good. So did the producers of Fast and Furious wreck a $3.4 million car? These mock-up cars are actually based on a donor chassis. So basically, it's not a chassis of a Lycan. It's an extended chassis of an existing donor car, which we're not going to mention. It's not a very safe car to drive it every day on the road. But to do these stunts, it does a job. It doesn't reach a certain level, you know, up to two, 300 kilometers per hour. There's a certain limit we can drive it. And the material we use are usually fiberglass. Uh, in our case, we use a lot of carbon fiber as well, because we use the real molds we use in the Lycan to build these mock-up cars. And this was... The reason why these took so much time to make, so it wasn't really easy to assemble, and it was really expensive to build as well, as stunt, stunt cars. Because every piece, every part was actually built the same way we build a real like it. Of course, the finishing wasn't there, you know, the interior was not the real leather, it was synthetic leather, you know, all these small things that were hiding up. And the engine had, didn't have 700 horsepower, it had 200 horsepower, so we played on these things. It didn't have the diamonds in the lights, it didn't have the gold threads, the concierge or the luxury watch, but, I mean, it looked like it had all these things inside.
Ralph traveled to watch the shooting of the film when terrible news spread on the set like fire. The whole production was overshadowed by the death of uh, Paul Walker, and we found out the next morning that he couldn't make it back uh, due to this tragic uh, accident that happened in California. The whole mood changed completely, you know, from there. And the movie stopped for six months, and we thought it was the end uh, of the movie, so we thought maybe we had lost this chance to be in this movie, unfortunately. However, they brought it back even bigger than before in tribute to Paul Walker, and I think, you know, it's even it's even better for all of us to know that we're making one of these incredible movies, one of the best movies coming out this year, I think, to get exposure to everyone, especially to tribute to Paul Walker to say, you know what, we didn't forget about you, we're doing something even better to remember you for, uh, for the years to come. W Motors has kept one of the cars made for the movie, and they don't intend to ever fix the red painted body, dents and damage inflicted by Hollywood. Unfortunately, for the last two years, we've been working with Universal, but we couldn't talk about it. It was, it was very private, you know, until they released the movie or the trailer, we couldn't actually mention that we are in the movie. So as soon as the first trailer came out, we barely saw the lichen. And then a month passed, and there was a Super Bowl, and they released the biggest trailer, you know, at the Super Bowl, and you see the red lichen flying from Etihad Tower landing in the other one. So this created incredible, incredible exposure and visibility to the brand. People knew the car, people were intrigued to know more about it, and for us, it gave us a lot of credibility to show that we created a car, it was launched recently, and it's very limited, and today it's actually doing a debut in Hollywood, so it's a very big step. And from the other side, in marketing as well, it's the first Arabian car, and it's the first time in history that an Arabian car made it to Hollywood and on the big screen. So it's also a very big pride for all of us in the region to know that we created a product, we, made, we took it there to Hollywood, and now we're in the biggest blockbuster in the world. So it's actually fantastic to be present there. After weeks on the road, the world now knows there is a new hypercar on the market, the first luxury car to be built in Arabia one of the fastest and most expensive automobiles ever, the W Motors Hypersport Lycan. And ever since we aired, I mean on TV, this video has been passing, passing around YouTube for maybe 40 and 50 different channels with millions and millions of views just watching this video, which is unbelievable. So far, what we have been getting, feedbacks, the, the media, the coverage, has all been very, very exciting and has been uh, exceeding our expectations uh, widely. Ralph DeBoss himself becomes somewhat of a celebrity in the region, the builder of the first Arabian hypercar. Well, you know, when I fly back to Lebanon once uh, every couple of weeks, I always, you know, had to go back to, to follow up on some conferences and some speeches I had to give. And uh, during my last trip, actually, I was on the plane and uh, everyone on the plane recognized me and they knew who I was, which was completely, was very weird for me. I didn't want, I didn't want this to happen. But there is no rest for Ralph. Now we're preparing our next step, which is uh, basically uh, making sure we have dealerships around the world uh, to accommodate the car, which will be ready in November. And now we're in talks with Spain and Portugal and Switzerland. The world has seen the Lycan, but so far only as a production model. The hardest part is still ahead for the W Motors team. The pressure now is actually delivering the car because we are in production. So the production process is very different than the marketing and the media, media side of it. The moment of proof to show the world that this car is actually running and it's going to compete with the biggest companies and the biggest cars that the world has ever seen. And then, a few weeks ago, the most important day in the history of the company. W Motors has invited sheikhs from all over Arabia, international motor journalists, and super wealthy people from all around the world, some of whom might just be interested in buying one of only seven Lycans for $3.4 million. And for us, the biggest milestone was definitely Yas Marina. Having the presence of you know, the royal family, the VIPs, and the media there as well, and giving them the car, telling them, guys, all right, this is what we, did, we built now, this is the proof. It was the most incredible feeling in the world, seeing the car doing these things in front of us. And for us, achievement-wise, it was a huge milestone, because we showed credibility, we showed to the people that we're not messing around, we're actually building a car that's incredible, and it can perform as we said, and it's gonna deliver even better than we said. So 
car. We're sitting on the outside and just looking at this car being, you know, being driven and being being wild and people taking pictures of it and just seeing the reactions of the people having a car actually not sitting on a stand but actually driving and performing. This was the most emotional, uh, you know, moment for all of us, for me especially, because after years of building the car, we're actually here and we're putting it on a platter and telling them, guys, it's ready. With its flat six-cylinder twin-turbo mid-rear engine, performs like a supercar should. And the distribution partners who have just signed to sell the cars, their confidence. The world needs a, needs a change in the automobile industry. And I think this will do it. This is the perfect car to make that change, as it's only seven pieces. And uh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It actually rivals the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis of today. I mean, it's such a, it's actually an aesthetically beautiful car, and the performance speaks for itself as well. Wow, it's amazing, right? This is faster I never tried in my life, right? So this is this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy car. I love it. Whoa. Weeks later, W Motors has sold four of the seven Lycans, each being built to the individual specs of each buyer. Ralph believes he can sell more than seven and is already working on the next million dollar model. The Lycan Hypersport was the first creation by W Motors and it's been a, it's been a dream to build such a machine. a dream to build such a company as well. And today we are living this dream to take it to the next step. And we're always gonna have this emotional attachment with, such, with, the, with this car. The Lycan is, is a beautiful vehicle. It's a beautiful creation. It's a beautiful machine. And what we have is a beautiful love affair, which is never gonna change. But it's only the beginning. The young man who started out with a dream and made it come true will not stop here. Today is not about the Lycan. Today is about our latest creation. The earth will shake violently. And Veneer will finally be free.